Praise the Lord. Amen, Jesus. <laughs> Enter into the courts of the Lord with praise and thanksgiving. Amen. Praise you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. I've had my uh, normal 30 viewers, when I'm on a good day anyway, <laughs> Amen, Jesus, uh, on the last video, and sometimes it goes higher to 60, rarely. But, so, I kind of figured, ah, that's okay. Most of them who are probably going to see it have already seen that video, so now it's time to move on. And uh, the one thing I, I really, I need to drive home here is that uh, I'm putting my, <laughs> putting my faith, okay, out here for everybody to see it, okay, when I mentioned to you, praise God, of what I believe was getting ready to take place. But when I went back over the video, it really didn't, it didn't really stand out as clearly as I want to try to explain what I believe by faith is getting ready to take place during these next four sets of three and a half year periods. Each three and a half year period overlapping the next. My premise is based upon the idea that from the beginning of trumpets to the, di uh, to the day of tabernacles, to the Feast of Tabernacles, there's a 15 day period. The 15th day is the day of tabernacles. So there's 14 days prior to the 15th day, which is the Feast of Tabernacles. I believe at this period of time we're going to see on the 15th day the return of Jesus Christ to tabernacle with us. Heavenly Jerusalem coming down, rule and reign, amen, Jesus, praise God. Now, <clears throat> so that each one of those days, as I mentioned in that video from the Feast of Trumpets, I believe this year, represent years and not days. So I've broken it down, and many of you, uh, <sighs> Father help them, uh, need to get a, sit back a little bit and get a picture of seven billion people in the world. This is a great big earth, brother. And each one, well not each one necessarily, but everyone is going to get a warning of the judgments of God coming prior to them coming, okay, which is what the tribulation period of time is all about for the world, okay. So they can <laughs> get out from underneath their doubt and unbelief regarding the fact that God exists, amen, Jesus, and take shelter, I believe, last chance uh, under the covering of the footmen from the east, which would be natural Israel, the seed of the woman. Now, that's the natural seed of the woman, who are known as the elect, because the spiritual seed of the woman is already in the barn, under the covering of God, safe. The gates of hell shall not prevail against it. He, why mention the gates of hell prevailing against it if it wasn't going to be here during the period of time of which the gates of hell were opened, the pit, that it might. And in that same verse in the book of Revelations, we see that the devil was already here waiting for the woman to give birth. Yes, it did take place in the natural. Jesus, but it also takes place in the spiritual, <laughs> the man-child company, okay, the many-membered body of Christ, it spiritually, okay, resurrects on the third day, and we have entered into, or are about to, the dawning of the third day, okay, but prior to that day coming, the darkness, three days, three years, okay, 
right? Three and a half years overlapping. Amos 9.13, you'll see the overlapping effect. No sooner does one happen than another happens. Okay, well, that's how this is going to go. But pragmatically speaking and practically speaking, brothers and sisters, they read Jesus, the faith has always been spread from faith to faith and glory to glory. In other words, the deep calling out to the deep. One brother to one sister, one sister to another sister, a brother to a brother, amen. This is how the word has always spread throughout the earth. Amen. Our, what's our example? The temple in Jerusalem. The law. And out of that area came what? Okay? The gospel of the kingdom of heaven. It wasn't being spread throughout all the earth all at once, was it? No. Well, this, you know, this takes place the same way. The only thing that's different about these days than those days, amen, Jesus, is the technology by which it's able to spread. So when the Father said he's going to do a quick work upon the earth in the end, well, this is, this is the part of what takes place as that quick work because now we communicate right here, right now, today, to my sister uh, Jamala, okay, across the pond in London. Same time you're getting this, she's getting this. And God knows how many others. When it really starts to take place, it's going to spread like fire. That's the whole point. Okay? So, amen, Jesus. I drew a little drawing because I know you can't see this because I need to get your attention on this. All right? It's just a basic drawing. I kind of added a few little things to it. But what I really want you to focus on are the four sets of three and a half years, which when you add them up, okay, it's four, or 14 years, all right, 14 days, and then on the 15th day, tabernacles, Christ has returned, heavenly Jerusalem, the established government, it's all, everything is done. The judgments and wrath of God are done. He comes Boom. It's over. Now we're on to a thousand year rule and reign of Jesus Christ on the 15th day. So, the 14 prior uh, days, which are years, are broke up in three and a half year parcels. Now I show you right here so you can just look at the parcels. Amen, Jesus. Okay. I see. Try to do it without looking at it. Okay, well, okay. Here's the first one. Whoops, wrong hand. <laughs> Here's the first one. First three and a half years. It's so hard to. And then the second one. Four, I got them numbered fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh. Okay, for a reason. All right, and I got my little brother materials 444 in there because I believe it's the unity, okay, of judgment. Uh, 444 actually uh, adds up to 12, which is divine government or the work and will of the Father, but it's in spirit, soul, and body. You got to understand, we're coming into a completion, being prepared to receive the fullness. Okay, and the completion of our faith, made perfect, complete, whole, all right, one with the Father and the Son. Now, the second three and a half is the fifth. Now, each one of those represent, okay, when you look at the menorah, amen, Jesus, I'm just going to put this down, okay, and then we see down here, 14 years equals 14 days, 15th day from, uh, from the Feast of Trumpets, okay, 15 years. On the 15th day from trumpets is tabernacles. Amen? Now I want you to hold me to these dates. <laughs> okay. Amen. Alright. Now the 4th, 5th, 6th, and 7th I believe 
<laughs> when you see, when you look at the menorah, okay, the center lamp in a menorah, okay, we will call the <laughs> the seventh or the Holy Spirit, okay, the Spirit of God. That's that's the, why. Because when you look at menorah and how it's made, the oil comes up through the top one and goes out to the three on either side. Okay? Remember, three on either side. Spirit, soul, body. Spirit, soul, body. One natural, one spiritual. That's one point in view of looking at it, which are the two men, natural Israel and spiritual Israel, being made one in this candlestick, but also very soon you're going to begin to see how this oneness is taking place through what goes on with natural Israel and with the body of Christ, spiritual Israel. Okay? <clears throat> so, when I say the fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh candles, I am making reference to the two individual works of the Holy Spirit. That center candle. The first work of the Holy Spirit in fulfillment was what Jesus did in fulfilling the prophecies right up to the day of Pentecost in which the Holy Spirit came upon us all. I can assure you, my brothers and sisters, the Spirit of God was more, most definitely <laughs> with Jesus, okay? It didn't wait till Pentecost to get here, amen? He was and is the living Spirit of God, the Word of God. Amen, Jesus? Nonetheless, the Spirit of God, the life-giving Spirit of God the Father, was in His blood, in His very nature and character, Emmanuel, God with us, in His very nature and character, as He walked upon this earth. That's why He said, If you see me, you see the Father. He was the image Okay, the expressed, express, when you express, what do you do? You walk, your expression, you know? That's how you express yourself, okay? Expressed image, reflection of who God the Father is, okay? So anyway, but back to that center candle. If you count them, amen, Jesus, from left to right, one, two, three, four. All right? Or from right to left, one, two, three, four. Okay? Although there's only seven, but if you count from either way, you come to the seventh one right in the center, which is the oil that comes forth from the throne room of God, the Holy Spirit. I am recounting that because in Scripture it says... Okay, that we shall be baptized in spirit. And like I said, don't despise the day of small things. And, and I'm telling you that's a big A-N-D. It separates the two. It separates it by 2,000 years. <laughs> spirit established, okay, the fire does the finish work, the purging and the cleansing. So what we're going to about to have is another movement of the Holy Spirit of God, just like in the day of Pentecost, amen, Jesus, that's going to go spread out from the west to the east, which turns out to be ultimately what wakes up those who are the remnant of Israel and who are going to repent of turn away from that tabernacle they're going to build, they're going to just separate themselves wholly unto God and not have nothing to do with the stiff neck and hard-hearted so-called Jew who right to the very bitter end <laughs> refuses to bow down to God. They think they're doing the will of God, but they're not. Okay. And there's a lot of people who are Gentiles, Greeks, whatever, who think they're also doing the will of God. 
just not too much more than the natural realm and you know they're serving God in the natural instead of in spirit and truth okay which is much boy oh boy did anybody watch the video with Rachel my god I don't know what happened during that month that she was gone but man oh man I made my comment and got out of there okay whoa we're perfecting the faith through the flesh now I guess you know through the works of the flesh and what we eat and don't eat okay I don't know boys and girls I don't know anyway spiritual and body another movement of the Holy Spirit of which is fire and what's the word say you shall be saved as if by fire now what's he saying well he ain't gonna start you on fire now a lot of people out here talking about Oh, the earth is all going to get burned up by a uh, nuclear explosion and everything's going to get destroyed. That is not what takes place. <laughs> okay? A thousand years from now, the cleansing, purging fire and the removing of the old earth and the coming of the new earth and the new heaven. Yeah, okay, but that's after the thousand year rule and reign and all the judgments of God and everybody's been brought up and uh, everybody gets their rewards and everything else. The only ones getting their rewards at this hour, right here, right now, as I've said before, are those who are transformed from mortal to immortal beings, which as far as I'm concerned, amen, Jesus, are the sons and daughters of God. Could the sons and daughters of God represent 144,000 individual bodies of Christ collectively together? Because he says all of Israel came together as one man, could they represent all of these individual bodies of Christ rising up, standing up under the anointed ministry of the sons and daughters and they're all made one and that all of them are made immortal? I can't tell you. I don't know. So all, all I can go by is what this puny little earthly brain is able to pick up spiritually and through the Word of God. And what I have picked up and what I have come to understand is that the 30, 60, 100 fold are individual measures of faith of which God knew from the beginning by seeking out your heart and your mother's wounds what measure of faith you could be obedient to. Now, it would not do the Father any good, amen, Jesus, to give you a measure of faith of which you would not walk in. Because why? He wouldn't take any pleasure in it. But to give you the measure of faith of which you can walk in and which your heart would you would be able to fulfill, then he's pleased. And I, I just believe that's the way it is, brothers and sisters. I just don't believe everyone was caught and chosen, okay, to become the sons and daughters of God. And that selection was not by me, nor anything I could do, or you could do, or anybody else. It was made by God the Father himself in the giving of that measure of faith in that mother's womb, of which that was all predestined to take place, your very lives as sons and daughters, that you would go through what you went through to bring you to the point of which the will of the Father. I do nothing I see not the Father do, and I say nothing I hear not the Father say. Just as Jesus, under that anointed ministry, and I mentioned that before, right here on earth, not in, in mortal bodies because he was in his natural body, and I explained that, when he received the anointing of the priesthood of Melchizedek. I believe the sons and daughters received the anointing of the priesthood, which comes through this candle, okay, which is about the light, the fifth, sixth, and seventh. But first, judgment. The fire. Okay? You're ready to clean up this house. Then the fifth, sixth, and final candles being lit. Mm -hmm. And the seventh church, the last one remaining, the apostate church, were gathered together in the sixth, Philadelphia. All right? The establishing of the faith the ministry of the gospel of the kingdom of heaven on the 5th. So right after this first three and a half year period, it's coming up right now. Now I want you to see what's going to take place here. I'll read it to you. You can't read it. I, uh, 
I'll get me a couple of nickels together and I'll get me some white paper and I always thought maybe the white paper would sh reflect and you couldn't even see the writing on it but I'm going to try with some white and see how it works. Okay. Uh, I just wanted to use up the rest of this roll and then I'll be on to another one. <laughs> okay. It's one of these sections which you probably can't see but I showed on the smaller piece of paper. Three and a half year periods. Amen? First one coming up. <clears throat> now up here I got the two men made one Israel, spiritual and natural. Call to repentance. Now remember, this period of time and what begins to take place shall be as in the day of Jonah, Noah, and Lot. Now whether or not they have a Pacific order relative to the spiritual work and will of the Father, I don't really know. I think it all works together because we have the call of repentance, but actually in the next week I, we have the gathering together, okay, into the barn. Call of repentance, first three and a half years, purging work, cleansing, separating the wheat and the tear, all right, the awakening. Wake up. Next one gathering. Now I want to uh, preface this with what's taking with place with the sons and daughters during this period of time. I believe the stone, the stones of which the walls that sit upon the foundation are also known as the barley harvest. They're not the wheat harvest. The believer, the 30-fold and the 60-fold. The believer, they're the wheat harvest. The sons and daughters are the barley harvest. Amen. Now if you'll look at that barley harvest is the first one to take place. Then the wheat harvest. Now I believe that order stands true for us spiritually. That during this period of time the sons and daughters, the stones are being gathered together in this net. Alright? So First three and a half years, call and repent, separate wheat from the tear, good fish and the bad fish, up together with the net. Amen, Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, Father. And uh, separating the good fish from the bad fish, blah, blah, blah. Now over here in uh, natural Israel, two sides, war against Syria, Iran, possibly even Egypt, definitely Syria and Iran. Uh, Begins the economic collapse worldwide. Because you got to remember now, we got a, a, a one world government coming. Now, for those of us who believe that we've come to the end time, that's a lot of things to take place, amen, Jesus. Come on now, let's use a little practical sense here. We've got a whole bunch of nations, okay? And uh, they're, they're not able to agree on anything. So something's got to force them to come into this agreement. I want you to understand also the activity of, I've mentioned to you before <laughs> of who those ten kings are. Everybody wants to see things in the natural, okay, and I don't, and I don't mean that they're not natural men, okay, but the word refers to them as kings, not governments or things like that. He's referring to <laughs> rich, young rulers, kings, the ten kings of the world, financially. Okay? I'll explain to you what my belief is about the world being divided in ten sections and that the devil, which I believe has either already came into possession of three of those sections, okay, of which he is the eighth now, and having control and the wealth and the power over the three gives him rule and authority over each one of the individual. In other words, he could of himself squash any one single section. All right? None of that really makes any difference because they're not going to argue with him. They like the plan he's got. <laughs> okay? 
Brother, they've been sold out to the spirit of darkness and mammon and wealth and power and everything. They, long before the devil even showed up, they were already his disciples, okay? Amen, Jesus. So there's no arguing between them. They like the plan. Now, whether or not he tells them to get an ultimately fight against God, I mean, gee, many Christmas, come on, folks. These kings and rulers of wealth and great finance, you don't think somebody ain't talked to them about what's going on in the Word of God and what the end time is coming and everything else? Come on. They're not ignorant of what's taking place. They have willfully chosen. Okay, that's why they're called the seed of darkness. His seed, his children. Just like we're God's children, we willfully, willingly allow ourselves to be led by the Spirit of God. They willingly allow themselves to be led by the Spirit of darkness. There ain't nobody getting tricked or fooled in this. Okay? There's a deception for man, and we'll go into that later on, and how God's got a perfect plan, and man ain't left out of this. He's getting a chance to get away from it. Exactly, actually, two more chances in this short period of time. But I'm not going to go into that. There's so much more uh, involved. I'm trying to just give you the basics, and I want you to hold me to these things. These periods of time are what starts to begin to take place because the witness of the truth of what takes place is very important that it be established. All right? So. First three and a half years, we've got the war over in Israel. we got judgment coming to the households of faith. Second three and a half years, the wheat harvest entering into the barn, body of Christ, sons and daughters, man-child company. Okay? That's where the gathering comes in, under the anointing, worldwide. At that time, what are they doing? Basically the same thing, but they're doing it in the natural. They're building the third temple. Because after this three and a half years, there's going to be a peace treaty signed. That's that peace treaty. Now, I believe Jacob's weak uh, 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 trouble is beginning very soon. And that that begins the seven years, amen, Jesus, of Daniel's 70th week. It's the middle of that week, amen, that the treaty, the peace sign, that you got. So, it may be down here further. I'll have to back up on that. But, because this, this is what the Word says, and this is why sometimes it's, I can use all the spiritual help that, interpreting and understanding the Word of God that some of you might want to be able to share if you ain't afraid to make a comment. Father God, I ain't going to bite your head off. I, I'm looking to reason together one with another. I, I Reach my hand out to you now almost uh, beyond a year. So if some of you are studied in the Word of God and haven't absolutely made any commitments to any particular brand or doctrine of faith, <laughs> or what I might con uh, consider spiritual versions, and you've studied the Word of God well enough, and I have a fluent enough knowledge of it to listen to what it is that I'm saying and can pick up on it, okay, Make a comment. Share. Break the bread, brothers and sisters. Okay. Anyway, the reason I say that is because what it says is that they rebuild the temple during a turbulent period of time. Now, turbulence does not necessarily mean to mean the beginning of Jacob's trouble. Okay? But I have a hard time of, uh, equating. Now, we'll, remember, we have Jacob, spiritually speaking, too. We've got the natural seed and we have the spiritual seed. All right? These two men being made one. So what's going to take place for one is going to take place for the other. It's just that one's going to take place in the natural and the other's going to take place in the spiritual. Okay? <laughs> Amen. Right, but it's happening both times. So, that's why I'm saying that a turbulent period of time, and they're coming to a peace treaty, all right, and then three and a half years later, 
the peace treaty is broken. That's when Armageddon begins. So you can put me on the records that I, I firmly believe that within the next six to seven years, we will have begun to enter into the war of Armageddon. Within the next, for the next three years, the economic collapse that comes by worldwide through the domino effect of the oil being held up, because I know a lot of you don't think it's going to affect everyone this way, but you've got to remember about these robber barons. And these things, I tell you, Father God, uh, are far beyond... You see, there's a, <laughs> there's a, uh, a bit of innocence. I, I don't know how to explain it. Or naivety. Because we, we just don't, we, in the light, as children of the light, in, a, in the transforming of our hearts and our minds, we just don't even go into the darkness and the depth of the darkness of witnesses and the things that other men are doing out of, I can tell you it's so horrific. You, if you actually saw it, you just would not believe it. But that's because we're being, <laughs> being led by the Spirit of God in love and faith. Okay, That's what we've been being nursed upon that uh, uh, breath of uh, mother. Okay, And uh, so our minds aren't like that. We don't think that way. And I can assure you, as bright as the light, of God in us as it ever increases that brightness the same is taking place in the opposite in the darkness and depravity of man you might not be able to see it right up on the surface but I guarantee you it's most definitely there the reason I say that is get these robber barons these ten kings now they're right to the point where Listen, nations and countries are nothing but puppets on strings to these men. So they can make a disaster out of anything they want to make a disaster out of it, make you believe it's a disaster, create a disaster of their own of which causes you to go and do what they want you to do, like good little, you know, on the strings, people, and you're going to go do it. Well, at least those who are not being led by the Spirit of God. That's exactly what takes place. That's why you see so much of this racist conversation going on about the black Israelite. And oh my God, look how fleshly it's all becoming. Amen, Jesus? So praise God. And unfortunately, my sister Rachel has gotten away from the spiritual eating part Okay, which is the defilement of how you defile yourselves spiritually through the spiritual, what food you're eating spiritually, not in the natural. Okay, so anyway, it's a little, okay, gray there for me. <laughs> so, but I'm going to go on my prayer. My premise is, this war is the beginning of Jacob's trouble. They have a period of peace after that three and a half years of war, which also begins the economic collapse, which is why the whole world is looking at them. Okay, come on now, clean this up. we got a worldwide economic thing going on here. You people need to come to peace and sign a treaty. That's it. And Israel's forced into dividing Jerusalem. Anyway, she builds her third temple. While she's building that third temple, we're being gathered in to the barn. You see the debt likeness? Okay? In the natural, they're building the temple. In the spiritual, we're coming together as one. Okay? Separation of wheat and tear. Once they get separated, they're going to get gathered. You, trust me, you're going to start looking for each other. <laughs> Amen. Okay. Well, on top of everything else is going on, which is what I told you, amen, Jesus, praise God, unfortunately, 
But we're going to have to get scared in our boots before we start to actually make a move and start to fear for what's getting ready to take place. Then and only then will you go beyond the superficial outer man, amen, Jesus, the shaft which is being burned up off the wheat, false covering, and go out there by spirit beings and care more about that unity and the spirit and love and obedience to the will of the Father than you are about anything on this earth. Trust me, time's coming. You won't think nothing of that stuff. And those that do, oh boy, look out. That's why they miss it. Run back. Oh, I got property to care for. Hey, man, Jesus. I got cattle to take care of. You know, anything to put off coming together and doing what it is that God would have us to do. And He's going to make it very clear to you all with these ministers of fire. <laughs> all right? So, okay, the war. Call to repentance. Natural Israel building her temple. Peace treaty after the next three and a half years. We're being gathered together. They're building their temple. The next three and a half years, brother, this is where the peace treaty is broken. Halfway through. This is that first three and a half years after the war. After they signed the peace treaty. Three and a half years later, it's broken. Now, the church taken to her secret place. Because I'm telling you, these have all been prepared to receive the sons and daughters. The sons and daughters were gathered together. Now the anointing comes forth from the sons and daughters of which the wheat are gathered into, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit. They hear the voice of many waters, the sons and daughters, and they are drawn to it. Peace tree is broken. Look out, folks. Tree broken. Second set of workmen. Natural Israel's. The workmen from the east. The repentant house of Israel. The remnant. They come forth at the time of Armageddon with their message of gathering together. That's why I told you there's going to be a second opportunity for man and for, unfortunately, some of them wheat that weren't obedient and some of them bad fish <laughs> that got cast out, they're going to get a chance to repent. Now they're going to lose their opportunity to enter into the kingdom of heaven and receive their eternal rewards, I believe. But nonetheless, I believe they'll be saved to live out the rest of their days on earth under the rule and reign of Jesus Christ. Same with the remnant of Israel. The only ones of the remnant of Israel, which I believe is, I believe the number is 7,000, it could be more. And those of you who have studied the Word of God and understand what, that the Word says that God has maintained 7,000 righteous men upon the earth through all the generations of Israel. It's those 7,000 men who I believe make up the remnant of natural Israel. Now more will be saved under that covering just like all of that are going to be saved under the anointed covering of the sons and daughters of God. The same is true of the covering of the election, of, of the elect. One is the election of grace, the other one is the elect. One is the natural seed, the other is the spiritual seed. Amen, Jesus? Okay. Now, the natural branch is being grafted back into her tree. <laughs> Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Go. So, amen, this final period of time, after the door has been shut over here, is everybody's last chance to get out from underneath what's coming next. Because you got three and a half, three and a half now. 42 month period of time, church taken to her secret place, and I believe this is when the completed work of the fullness of the gospel takes place 
in the banquet hall of which our enemies are all around us. All right? But they can't cut your hair. Though there will be 10,000 to the right or 1,000 to the left, not one hair on your head shall be harmed. And we ain't breaking rank either. Moving straight forward when this begins. There ain't no moving to the right or the left. Straight forward in this light that shines forth. Again, Isaiah 58. Please, if you don't read anything else, read Amos 9.13 and catch that overlapping effect of which the grapes are crushed and the wine comes down from the mountain. And then I want you to see, amen, Jesus, the sons and daughters standing upon Mount Zion with Jesus. Okay? I've mentioned to you before that these two men are also the two witnesses. Amen, Jesus? Each has its own mouthpiece of which God speaks through, but nonetheless, these are the trumpets. These is the, the first and the last trumpet call. The many member bodies made one, and the two men made one in Christ Jesus, spiritually and naturally. So, what do we got? We're down here now, treaty broken, second set of workmen, natural is a remnant, footmen from the east, gathering, Armageddon begins. What happens over here? The church is taken to her secret place. The last three and a half years, amen, Jesus. The bowls of wrath from God. Everything that is horrible and terrible. Now, remember this. All of this work is to do what? What were the trials and tribulations for us in our lifetime for? To refine us. The tribulation is to wake up man to see the truth that God of God's existence, that he might flee also. Because in the end, it's possible they turn away from their unrighteousness, their doubt and unbelief, and enter in, and they turn away from their unbelief on that last day. Just as I have shared with you, there are those who have been walking in their righteousness which will turn away from the righteousness of Jesus Christ, refuse to receive the covering and the anointing of the Word of God, and be left out. Both are true, and man is giving, being given an opportunity as well. God's mercy and grace endures forever, folks, but he does not strive with man forever, okay? So there's a line getting drawn here, which two things are working together very closely. Mercy and grace and the line being drawn. Raise up that standard, amen, Jesus. Draw a line. Come forth, Lazarus, out of these dead bodies, these tombs. <coughs> so, well, Last three and a half years, wrath of God comes to 14 years. Count it up, look it over, it overlaps. 14th year. Before, okay, all of man is destroyed. And for the sake of the elect, the natural seed, who are covered by this, but for their sake, because they got to endure this period of time, just like we got to endure tribulation. They're going to have to endure judgments. And tribulation and judgments are the two portions poured out upon the whore and her siblings. So, 15th day, Sabbath rest, the thousand year rule and reign, tabernacles, kingdom of heaven. This world has become his world. This government has become his government. And now we still have a period of time of a thousand years, and each one of you come out from under the anointing as natural, regular, everyday human beings. All right? 
to fulfill the remainder of the meek inheriting the earth. All right? Of which some will live to be 120 years of age, while only some will only live to, live to be 70 years of age. Some will receive the blessings of God because they bring their offering to God. Let us go up to the mountain of our God, up to the temple of our Lord. Okay? Bringing our tithes and our offerings. Well, brothers and sisters, man is not automatically going to be able to do that nor understand to do that. So, how is he going to know if he don't go up there with you? You're going to show him what it is to be obedient to the laws of God. Because I believe we're all under the laws of God. There isn't any sacrificing of any animals. Jesus Christ is the blood. Why do you think building that temple and offering a sacrifice of animals is considered the abomination of desolation? Because he left that temple desolate already. The abomination is they're repeating, starting back up the animal sacrifice after Jesus has shed his blood. That's the abomination. I don't know about you, but it's an abomination to me. The house was already left desolate, and they built it again. It's only the type. He told them. The true temple is in heaven. She's our mother, heavenly Jerusalem, born from above. I love you guys. Praise God. So... A lot of things getting ready to take place, amen, Jesus. And I love you all. And I pray that the Lord's blessing be upon you in Yeshua's name. Amen.